Microsoft Azure is a leading cloud computing platform that has become increasingly popular in the recent years. And for those who are looking to pursue a career in cloud computing, Microsoft Azure offers a wealth of opportunities. And friends, AZ900 certification can serve as a valuable stepping stone into the world of Microsoft Azure. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. In this part 27, we have some important questions around the Azure support plans and some revision questions with variations to the ones we have seen in the previous parts. So what are we waiting for? Let's dive in. So let's begin part 27 with question number 501. It says that you are building an application using a virtual machine in Azure and as a security requirement, it is necessary to apply Azure multi-factor authentication based on certain condition. Which Azure service should you choose? Your options are Azure Monitor, Azure Advanced Threat Protection. The third option is Azure Active Directory ID Protection. And lastly, we are given with Azure Security Center. And the correct answer for this question is option C, Azure Active Directory ID Protection. So Azure Active Directory ID Protection allows you to apply MFA or multi-factor authentication with the conditions. And it is also used to detect risk such as anonymous IP address logins, unfamiliar sign-ins and also credential leaks. So that's why option C is the correct answer. Moving on to the question number 502, it says that your company has a virtual machine hosted in Microsoft Azure. The virtual machines are located in a single Azure virtual network named VNet1. Now the company has users that work remotely. The remote workers requires access to the virtual machines on VNet1, which is the virtual network. How should you do it? Your options are configure a site to site VPN. The second option is configure a VNet to VNet VPN and thirdly we are given with configure a point to site VPN or P2S and then we have configure direct access on a Windows Server 2012 server virtual machine and lastly we have configure a multi-site VPN and the correct answer for this question is option C configure a point to site P2S VPN. And the reason is because point to site VPN or P2S VPN gateway connection lets you create a secure connection to your virtual network from an individual client computer. And as you can notice in the question as well that we have remote workers who are working from their home locations on their own computers or the laptops provided by the company. So that's why P2S is the best choice. Further, it says that P2S VPN is also a useful solution to use instead of site-to-site -site VPN when you have only a few clients that are needed to connect to the virtual network. So that's why my friends, P2S is the best choice for this question. Moving on with the question number 503, it says which of the following provides a command platform for deploying objects to your cloud infrastructure and maintaining consistency throughout your Azure environment. Your options are Azure Policy, Resource Group, Azure Resource Manager and the last one is Management Group. And the correct answer for this question is option C. Azure Resource Manager. The reason is that Azure Resource Manager is a service that provides a management layer that allows you to create, update and delete Azure resources all while maintaining consistency across your Azure environment. So that's why Azure Resource Manager is the best choice for this business case. Coming up now is question number 504. It says that your company is planning to move from on-premises environment to Azure and you have decided to develop your application using Docker as a development environment. Which of the following is the best service to use for this scenario? Your options are Azure App Service, Azure Container Instances and thirdly we have Azure Functions and lastly Azure Virtual Machine. And I'm pretty sure that all of you have guessed the right answer and that is option B, Azure Container Instances. So Azure Container Services, my friends, is a service that runs Docker containers on demand within your Azure environment and it can operate inside a separate container without orchestration and run event-driven application, deploy quickly from the container development pipeline and run the data processing and build the jobs. Moving on with the question number 505, it says which state accurately describes the modern lifecycle policy for Azure services and your options are a Microsoft provides mainstream support for a service for five years option B is 
Microsoft provides a minimum of 12 months notice before ending support for a service and thirdly we are given with after a service is made generally available Microsoft provides support for the service for a minimum of four years and lastly when a service is retired you can purchase extended support for the service for up to five years and the correct answer for this question is Microsoft provides a minimum of 12 months notice before ending support for a service. And before I move ahead to all the Azure learners who are joining us for the first time today, please watch the previous parts of this series. We have already covered 500 questions. So please make sure to cover them all before you give your AZ 900. Now let's move on with the question number 506. It says Azure Site Recovery provides fault tolerance for the virtual machines. Yes or no? And the correct answer is no. And the reason is very simple. Site Recovery is a native disaster recovery as a service, which is also known as DRAS. And it is not linked with the fault tolerance. And most surely you can watch the previous parts as we have discussed the correct service that you should use to provide fault tolerance for the virtual machines. And here comes the question number 507. It says that your developers have created a portal web app for the users in Miami branch office. Now the web app will be publicly accessible and used by the Miami users to retrieve customer and product information. The web app is currently running in an on-premises test environment and you plan to host the web app on Azure. Now you need to determine which Azure web tier plan to host the web app. The web tier plan must meet the following requirements. The requirements are that the website will use miami.wayland.com URL. The second one is the website will deploy to two instances and the third one is SSL support must be included. Fourthly, we have the website requires 12 GB of storage and lastly, of course, its cost must be minimized. Which web tier plan should you use? Your options are standard, basic, free or shared and the correct answer for this question is option a standard so this is the microsoft documentation on which you can read all about the web tier plans so here you can see if you remember the question very well the first requirement for the question was that the website should have a custom url which was miami.wayland.com so here you can notice on the left hand side we are given with the usage tiers and under this you can notice this custom domain and you can very well see that this custom domain is supported in the standard web plan but I'm sure that you're also noticing that this one is also supported in the basic and the shared. So why we have chosen the standard? Let's find out with the next requirement. The second requirement was that the website should be deployed in two instances. And here you can see that maximum instances here we are given with dash which means nothing and then in the shared also we are given with dash which is also then means nothing then with basic we are given with up to three and then in standard we are given up to ten so now we have two choices the first one is basic and the second one is standard so let's move on to the third requirement the third requirement in the question was SSL support must be included and to find out more on the SSL, I have come to this section in the same documentation. It says that the secure socket layer or SSL certificates for custom domains is available on basic standard premium service plans. And please note that SSL certification enables secure connections to your custom domain website. So once again, you can notice that SSL is supported in both basic and the standard. So now what to do? Let's go on to the fourth requirement. The fourth requirement was that the website requires 12 GB of storage. So what did I say? I said 12 GB of storage and here you can see that in the basic we have only 10 GB of storage but in the standard plan we are given with 50 GB of storage. So this is the only plan that fulfills all our requirements. So let's revise once again. Standard plan covers all the business needs listed in the question. We are getting the custom domain. We are also getting up to three instances. Thirdly, we are getting the SSL support. And finally, we are getting up to 50 GB of storage. And this means standard is the best plan that we can choose to fulfill this business requirement. Coming up next is a similar question, question number 508. It says that your developers have created 10 web applications that must be hosted on Azure. Now you need to determine which Azure web tier plan to host the web apps. The web tier plan must meet the following requirements. The first one is the web apps will use custom domains. The second one is 
Web apps each require 10 GB of storage. Please note my friends, this is a very, very important requirement. And then the third one is the web apps must each run in a dedicated compute instances. And the fourth one is load balancing between instances must be included. And lastly, cost must be minimized. Which web tier plan should you use? Your options are standard, premium, basic, free or shared. And the correct answer that I have picked is option B, premium. Now let me give you my reasoning for it in case you do not agree with that. Please let me know in the comment section. So once again my friends, I want your attention on this requirement. The second one which says the web apps each require 10 GB of storage. So how many web applications do we have? We have 10 web applications each require 10 GB. So that means 10 multiplied by 10. So total we need 100 GB of storage. And due to the need for 100 GB of storage, we cannot pick standard this time. This time we have to pick premium because the premium plan gives you 250 GB of storage space. So that's why my friends, I have picked premium. But in case in the question, you are not given with this premium option, then in that case, you should always go for the standard one. But still, once again, if you have the contrarian view, please let me know in the comment section and we can have a good discussion. Coming up next is question number 509. It says that you are required to deploy an artificial intelligence solution in Azure. You want to make sure that you are able to build, test, deploy predictive analytics for the solution. And the given solution provided in the question is that you want to make use of Azure Cosmos DB. Does this meet the goal? Yes or no? And this one, my friends, is an incorrect solution. That's why no. And the reason is very simple that Azure Cosmos DB, which is presented as the solution for this question, is a fully managed NoSQL database for modern app development single digit multi-second response times and automatic and instant scalability guarantees speed at any scale. So you can see that Azure Cosmos DB is a fully managed NoSQL database and it has nothing to do with the artificial intelligence solution. So that's why no is the correct answer. Question number 510, the question is exactly the same. However, the solution says that you should make use of Azure Machine Learning Studio. Does this meet the goal? Yes or no? And yes, of course, this one meets the goal. Coming up next is question number 511. It says that your company's Active Directory Forest includes thousands of user accounts. Now you have been informed that all the network resources will be migrated to Azure. Thereafter, the on-premises data center will be retired. Now you are required to employ a strategy that reduces the effect on users once the planned migration has been completed. As a solution, you plan to sync all the Active Directory user accounts to Azure Active Directory or Azure AD. Does this meet the goal? Yes or no? And this one, my friends, is a correct solution. That's why yes is the correct answer. And now we have question number 512. It says, what does a customer provide in a software as a service model? Your options are application data, data storage, compute resources or application software. And the correct answer for this question is option A, application data. Question number 513 says, what is the first stage in Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework in Azure? Your options are adopt the cloud. The second one is make a plan. Third one is ready your organization. And lastly, define your strategy. And the correct answer for this question is option D, define your strategy. And in case you are wondering what is Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework, let me give you some documentation. So here it is. It says that Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework for Azure is a full lifecycle framework that enables cloud architects, IT professionals and business decision makers to achieve their cloud adoption goals. It provides the best practices, documentation and tools that helps to create and implement businesses and technology strategies for the cloud. And the link for this documentation from Microsoft is given in the description box. Coming up next is question number 514. It says to which cloud models can you deploy physical servers? Your options are public cloud, private cloud, hybrid cloud and public cloud. The third option is hybrid cloud only. And the fourth one is private cloud and hybrid cloud. And the correct answer for this question is option D, private cloud and hybrid cloud. And now we have question number 515. It says that your team needs to have a tool that can be used to process data from millions of sensors. Which of the following service can be used for this purpose? Your options are 
Azure Machine Learning, Azure IoT Hub, Azure AI Bot, and the last one is Azure Functions. And the correct answer for this question is most surely Azure IoT Hub. And now we have question number 516. It says that your team needs a tool that can be used to correlate events from multiple resources into a central repository. Which of the following can be used for this purpose? Your options are Azure Event Hub, Azure Security Center, Azure AD or Azure Log Analytics. And the correct answer for this question is option D, Azure Log Analytics. Coming up next is question number 517. A platform as a service or PaaS solution provides full control of operating system that hosts the application. Yes or no? And the correct answer is no. And this is because PaaS solution does not provide access to the operating system. The Azure Web App Service provides an environment for you to host the web application. Behind the scenes though, the web apps are hosted on a virtual machines running IIS servers. And please note that you do not have any direct access to the virtual machines or the operating system that is running IIS. So that's why no is the correct answer. Coming up next is question number 518. It says a platform as a service solution provides additional memory to the apps by changing pricing tiers. Yes or no? And the correct answer as per me is no. And let me present you one more question with a little bit of variation so that you can understand why I have picked no for this question. So here it comes question number 519. It says a solution that hosts web apps in Azure can be provided with additional memory by changing the pricing tier. Please note the words in this question. We are saying can be provided with the additional memory. So this question is talking about the possibility of providing additional memory. But the previous question that was saying if pass solution or platform as a service solution provides out of the box capability to provide the additional memory. So that's why in the previous question we picked no. But for this question, the correct answer is yes. But friends, I'm really interested to know what are your views on this question. Please do share your feedback in case you feel the answer picked by me is not correct. But also my friends, please remember just not to give the answer in yes or no. Also share your logic. Why are you picking no or why are you picking yes? And with that, let's move on to the next question. Question number 520. It says a platform as a service solution can automatically scale the number of instances. Yes or no? And this one, my friends, is a correct statement. So friends, if you think that I'm doing a good work in bringing these well-researched questions, then I want your support to grow. And for that, please press the like button as it makes the YouTube algorithm happy and also help us reach to the wider audience just like you. And in case you join the Tech Blackboard family for the first time today, then please do subscribe to the channel and also select that all option to get the timely notifications of all our upcoming videos. And not to mention, please share our videos on your social media platforms, LinkedIn, WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram or any social media platform of your choice. And that's all my friends for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.